okay let's go over 3d printed flexures um, so I have a, a simulation study in, in Fusion 360 right here um, where I'm I've got a simple two dot flexure that I'm expecting to move about three millimeters um, and we just ran a little stress study on this a static force study and we came out to 30.33 MPA right so I'm starting out at the end because I think it's important to have these things in mind uh, when you start. Um, so what things do we need to keep in mind is when is this thing going to break over what period of time and we can simply look those things up um, by using Google and you can just look up the SN curve of whatever material you're using. So PETG isn't that great um, if you had something like uh, Delrin. Um, it's much better over time right so you can you can potentially with the same exact stress on here you could get up to uh, over a million cycles on on delrin but petg not as good um, but we can 3d print uh, petg pretty easily so we would expect at 30 mpa probably around 5,000 cycles and so um, that's okay for me so that's one thing i need to keep in mind here the other thing i need to keep in mind as i'm designing this um, is going to be my 3D printer, right? So this is already sliced. I can see here that I don't have any infill on what's going to actually flex. So I wanna make sure that's the case. Um, there's probably ways to increase the, the strength of this with infill, um, but as a general rule of thumb, um, it's much easier to just think about the extrusion width of your nozzle and design around that. So right now I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, the extrusion width is 0.45 millimeters, so if I want two uh, thickness, uh, the two lines in here, I'm going to do 0.9 millimeters. That'll be the width of this arm. And then I'll just make this overall very easy uh, as I'm designing it. I don't have to worry about infill here. Um, so those are the things I typically keep in mind as I'm, I'm going through this. So if I go back to my design and I start over, um, let's kind of work through this. So this is a two DOF system. I'm gonna start off with a center rectangle. And this will be 15 millimeters uh, tall and 30 millimeters wide, right? Um, let me go on here, make another one here. Okay, so Um, okay, so I want this to travel three millimeters, so that's what I'm going to do right here. This will be three by three. Um, so this width right here, that'll be uh, the travel distance. Now I'm going to make my arm. So the arm, like I said, I need to keep in mind here um, the extrusion width. So I want this to be equal to two, uh, the width of two extrusions, so that's 0.9 millimeters by 30, so that looks good. Um, so same thing here, this is going to flex another three millimeters this direction, so it's going to be three by three. Um, so let's see. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about a few different things. If I look at this right there, um, doo -doo -doo. Sorry. if I look at the width of this, the, the width of the arm itself, I can reduce the stress on the plastic by making this longer. Um, or if I, you know, I want this to be harder to push up and down, I would make this shorter. Oh, that's gonna put more stress on the entire system. Um, but anyways, so let's keep going. Let's see, 30 by, let's say three. Okay, so now if we look at the profile here, this is starting to come together. Um, We've got one side of the flexure done. Um, since it's going to move, let's say this, the y on the y-axis, I need a little bit of buffer room on the sides. Um, so we can go ahead and create that now. Let's say that's one millimeter on each side. Good. Okay. And then we want this to be another three millimeters wide. Three. Three. Oops. Like that. 
this will all come together in a second. Good. Let's get this all the way to the bottom. I'm kind of hacking my way through this. Um, anyway, let's clear out some of these lines and we'll start to see this take shape. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, this all looking good. This is looking good. Can we do that? And then let's add another line right here. All right, so if I look at the profile here, you can see that this is starting to come together. Um, so now I designed one side of this, I can just duplicate this now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse this arm once it's duplicated. So if I move copy, I do a rotate around this axis. M for move copy, rotate, I'm going to create a copy and rotate it 180 degrees around that axis. Oop, didn't select everything, but that's okay. Let's do another rotation and we'll rotate it around this axis, 180 degrees. Okay, let's finish off this line. Okay, let's delete some of these because we don't need them anymore. Getting there, getting there. Okay, that is starting to look good. If I select the profile uh, and inspect this, we can see right here, what do we have? We have a width of, this should be 0.9, yep. So we have a width of 0.9 here. We have a travel of three millimeters. Yep, travel of three millimeters, so that's looking good. Uh, I can create a point in the center. There we go. To put a little screw or something. Let's extrude this five millimeters. So the the amount that I extrude this is going to determine um, the strength of the system as well. So that's five millimeters tall. I'll create a hole in the center. Uh, let's do all, make this flat, and uh, let's say it's 4.8 millimeters, and we'll put a 5 millimeter bolt in the center of that. All right, so that's simple. That's a one-off system that'll go in the Y direction. Um, simple, easy peasy.